Each and every day, enjoy the Simple Six menu at Subway. An entire made-for-you meal featuring one of six six-inch sandwiches like the Italian BMT or Black Forest Ham. With any bag of chips and a 21-ounce drink, all for only $6. Subway. Eat fresh. The BS Report is a free-flowing conversation that occasionally touches on mature subjects. The BS Report. The BS Report with Bill Simmons. Welcome to the BS Report. Monday morning here in Southern California. We have Cousin Sal coming up in a little bit to talk about the Week 14 lines and everything that happened in Week 13. But first, we lost uh, Paul Walker from the Fast and Furious franchise and a bunch of other movies. Um, one of our favorites here in the BS Report, uh, Adam Crow and I have done podcasts. We did one after Fast 4. We did one after Fast 5. We did one after Fast 6. Um, we love the franchise. We enjoyed Paul Walker's work. We were bummed out. Uh, by the news, to say the least. And Corolla is making a quick appearance right now. We never do phoners, but we had to do one in this case. How are you? Oh, you know, heavy heart. Um, yeah, we talk, you and I talked on Saturday night. And um, <laughs> we we haven't had a lot of tragedy in our friendship. We were both, we were both like really bummed out. And I, and I thought what was interesting, like social media, usually snarky. Alex Papadimus pointed this out today when – um when he wrote his piece for Grantland about it, like a snark free reaction, which is really, really rare in this day and age. I think, I don't think people really understood how much they enjoyed the Paul Walker era. Right. It was like, I, Oh, I, I hadn't really thought about it. No, I, I know. I never, I didn't really think about it either. I guess it was like uh, life before prohibition. You know, you got your <laughs> booze, you were happy, but you didn't really appreciate it or thank thankful about it and then when it was taken away it all came crashing down right I, I was i was waiting for a lot of you know haters to pop up and uh talk trash about it and and they didn't and i'm i'm thankful they didn't i you know i think him dying while he was you know working with his charity also there's that sort of thing too it's weird which is like when Gandolfini died a few months ago, he was in such horrible physical shape that when you found out he was 48 or 47 or 51 or whatever it was, you were like almost surprised, like, wow. And then there's that thing where it's like, geez, that, well, you know, he didn't take care of himself. Paul Walker looked like, you know, he was, he still had that new car smell to him. Right. Yeah, the Gandolfini, I guess, was a good comparison because that was another one that was greeted by a snark-free reaction and just people bummed out. I think what, what was interesting to me as I thought about it, um, I this was this was the best movie franchise, you know, and this was one of those things that I think we talked about it the last time when we did the Fast Six podcast. This is something that we felt like could just come out every year indefinitely. Like they could have done 10, 12 more of these. And I think they had built it into an ensemble cast. And really the only one that they couldn't lose from this movie, I think, was Vin Diesel. But he was such a big part of it. And ironically, one of the themes was about family. And we, we joked about that on our last podcast, like how Vin Diesel's his character, Dom, was always talking about the family of Fast and Furious. But it did kind of feel like a family, you know, and it's like Paul Walker's out. Yeah, the franchise can go on, but it still feels weird. So the family parallel kind of extended into real life, it felt like. I, I agree. And, uh, you know, there's like, you have like the James Bond stuff, you know, but they just get a new James Bond every two years. And then it's a, it's a crapshoot. You don't know who you're going to get. Maybe get Pierce Brosnan or something. And it doesn't work out that well. You know, we yeah. all agree. But this is not that kind of franchise. I agree with you. This is like the same group of seven people going on their seventh movie. And, you know, the one time they tried to break up the franchise, even though they shoehorned in Vin at the end of the movie, still yeah. nothing there. Yeah, but you were, you were a little higher on Tokyo Drift than most. But, I, you know, they could eat... Change isn't bad for a franchise. Um, 
I, I think if you look at things that have succeeded and lasted longer than they should have, it was always something that kind of made a move. I think Cheers is the best example of this, going from Shelley Long to Kirstie Alley, extended it for six, seven years. And they can easily, you know, in fact, I don't know, we'll talk about how they're going to save Fast 7 in a second, but for like Fast 8, Fast 9, Fast 10, they could easily introduce some sort of new token white guy, FBI dude, like Channing Tatum, you know, one of those types of guys, and and give the movie a new life. But I think the bummer is I, I really felt like, like Brian, the character that Paul Walker played in Dom, you know, that was kind of the spine of the movie. And I'm not I, – it's going to be a different type of series now. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it works or not, you know, which – I mean, do you think they go on from this? I, you know, there's there's one thing I know about Hollywood when they were like, CNBC fired Alec Baldwin after just two weeks. Man, that seems a little bit harsh. I mean, he had his outburst and everything, but uh, still seems like they should have given the guy a break. And I said, oh, no, they fired him because he got no rating. They didn't fire him because they were taking a moral stand against guys that throw out homophobic slurs. Right. They fired him because he didn't do well. Uh, I mean, we all know that. Everyone who lives, who lives anywhere around Hollywood knows, you know, Baldwin would have, if his ratings were gangbusters, he'd still be on the air with a slap on the wrist and a forced apology and whatever it is. So we all know when something is making $10 billion worldwide, it doesn't just go away. Yep. And... Um, and this I, is not. This is way too big a franchise to ever just go away. Yeah. And now here's what I here's what I think, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to speculate, and I know you know you're still grieving, but as a Pats fan, Drew Bledsoe was a good looking, highly touted quarterback, and when he went down, it looked like the season was lost. Right. Right. Well, in um. Tom Brady, and you never look back. I'm so going to throw out a name. Okay. Ted McGinley. <laughs> oh, no. Ted McGinley comes in, and he just makes things better. That's all. He might be too he, old. Maybe his... Uh, you know what? That's what makeup and hair is for. And he's a beautiful man. He's blonde. He's about the same size. He comes in there. He did it for Happy Days. He later on did it for Love Boat. He later he did it for Married with Children. He steps in and he fixes things. Well, what do they do he about fact? Your Tom Brady. <laughs> Tom Brady Sr. Uh, How about Tom Brady? About He's Tom got, Brady. That's interesting. That's it. Maybe they could do like a Johnny Utah scenario where he gets disgraced in a Super Bowl and becomes an FBI agent and nobody recognizes right. him. Exactly what I'm talking about. The boy has chops. He's probably, you know, works out doing his doing his acting stuff, which is hell. He could step in during the off season and knock one of these things out. Well, we don't know how long, how far along they are in Fast Seven. And from what I've heard, Paul Walker filmed most of his scenes, but not all of them. And they don't really know what to do. And and also on top of it, like they're all devastated. They all love the guy. And it's a weird thing to go from the shock of what happened to all of a sudden trying to figure out how to save this movie, which by all accounts, they were they were kind of rushing to get ready for next summer anyway. They were they brought in Kurt Russell as uh, Paul Walker's dad. So I don't know how that plays wow. out. Um, the last time we saw something like this, I, there was a Heath Ledger movie that that uh, had. I, I think got disrupted because of, of his death. But the last famous example of this was uh, Brandon Lee and The Crow. And they yeah. used a lot of Brandon Lee footage and patched it together. Now with CGI um, and the fact that they filmed six movies with Paul Walker, like, I, you know, they could probably piece something together where where it would make it, you know, film quote unquote film scenes with the footage they have from him. Um, it feels yeah, weird, not, though. I don't know if I like, like it. Not only that, but they, they they have guys who, like, professionally do guys' voices. Mm. So all you need is Paul Walker's back to Vin Diesel's face, and then you get some voiceover artists saying, well, I'm going to Mexico for good now, and I'll never be back. 
and then you just see Vin nod, and you can button it up that way. Like there's a million, there's a million different ways to work this, but this is going to be huge because it's kind of like after an artist dies, the paintings go up. Like how many people? You and I were pumped about seeing Fast and Furious when they would come out before. When this thing comes out, how 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 there are we going to be to see this movie? Well, and especially like uh, you know how they handle this in the movie, it, it it could be really emotional. And I don't know if it's the right idea or the wrong idea to to you know, kill off the character, for lack of a better word, in the movie. But what else are they going to do? I mean, they could have him go away and pretend that, you know, he lives on forever. I think that would be strange. I think it'd be strange to kill him off. Um, I, I don't like anything about this. And I'll tell you another thing. It's one of the most fascinating kind of movie, what do you do questions that I could remember. Because I don't think there's a right answer and there's not an answer that makes me feel good about it. I don't know how much of the movie they've filmed, but you know, I really doubt they're going to walk away from an $800 million movie. And if anything, this is going to generate more publicity to it. So how they decide what they're going to do is going to be as fascinating as anything about this, I think. I, uh, I concur, and I think it'll be interesting. And it's you know, I was, I was thinking about the, the role Paul Walker played in that movie and just, you know, Into the Blue and Varsity Blue and some of these other things. <laughs> I always thought it was very Keanu Reeves-ish, the career he had. And Keanu is somebody, he wasn't Robert De Niro, but right. was somebody I always enjoyed in different movies. And he was kind of always playing himself, but there was something super likable about him. And he was never trying to win the Oscar. And, uh, right. and I thought Paul Walker tapped into that. And I don't, I can't really think of any other actors that could pull that off in a mainstream way where you just kind of felt like you knew the guy, like he could have come over to your house on, on July 4th and you'd never met him, but he would have fit in. And uh, and I don't know who takes that mantle now, because Keanu is like hitting his late 40s. Uh, Walker was kind of in his prime. Is there somebody you see on the horizon? Mm. Well, you know, I don't know. Maybe there's a, a third uh, Ainsworth brother, whoever played uh, or played Thor. I think there brother. is a third Hel Helmsworth brother. Yeah. Yeah. Some, he needs to be hatched or, you know, let, a, let upon us. Or Liam Neeson needs to have a son. I don't know if he's got a son, but that guy's got to, that guy's got to spread those genes around. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, I, Paul Walker was from Glendale. That's where I'm basically from. I guess he's just a, just a valley guy the, yeah. the whole time. And uh, just by all rights, just seemed like uh, the most regular guy on the planet. And yeah, I'm glad that Tweetosphere is not talking a lot of smack. I I do think, and I hope that people have been called out on that enough that they've kind of knocked it off. I'm hoping. Yeah. Especially when people leave behind children and you know who have computers and that kind of stuff. Well. It's a tough one for us. I, I, it was the one franchise that I felt like was kind of impenetrable. I just felt like they could have made 10 more of these, and I was excited to see where it went. And I'm sure they'll come up with some wrinkles for it, but it, it's, it's definitely going to change the way uh, they even like seeing these movies come on HBO or TNT or whatever. It's always going to feel a little different. Uh, I just feel bad. I like Paul Walker, and you know, I, rare... I did too. And, yeah. and listen, you know, but thank God they brought on The Rock when they did, because that sort of picked up some of the uh, the slack. I mean, now you have this, you know, with Diesel and Walker the whole time, and then you brought The Rock in, and now you've kind of, and I don't know, Jason Statham or something like that. You know, I'm sure. They'll figure out a way to uh, go on without Paul Walker. I don't know if I want to go on without Paul Walker. That's what I'm saying. Tyrese showed up at the crash site yesterday. It was it was really emotional. Uh, and also, like, I, I couldn't believe how many people showed up at the crash site. And, you know, I, I just think people love this franchise, and it's, it's the most reliable franchise there is. And anybody who's in it, I think uh, there's an emotional attachment. I Like, Die Hard faded off. 
the Star Wars series changed over time. I don't, I don't think there's an attachment like there is for this. Raiders of the Lost Ark kind of died off. Uh, you could go on down the line. This was the only one that put out seven, you know, six movies, and people were looking forward to the seventh as much as any of them. Uh, so oh, we'll see. Because all the other ones, uh, the First Bloods and all that, the Rambos and all that, they all just got more and more ridiculous, and they became parodies of themselves, and they just got worse. You know, the first one was always the best, and then they just kind of trickled trickled off. I mean, right. you know, Rocky, Rocky definitely had its moments, but in general, they all just kind of fell off a cliff. Right. This is one of the few ones where the fifth one was better than the second and the third one. That, yeah, it's that, like they, they were perfecting it. Yeah, but when does that ever happen in a series where the fifth one is better than the third one? Yeah, we, what did we rank? We ranked the fifth one first. You said it was going to be your alarm code for your house, whatever, whatever the order was. It was, I think it was five, yeah. four, one, six, two, three, something like that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the fifth and sixth ones were two of the best three that they put out in the series. And I, from, by, you know, from what everyone was saying, the seventh was going to be maybe even the best one because they're bringing in all these new guests, all this stuff. Anyway, Adam, we will, uh, We'll carry on with heavy hearts. We like Paul Walker. Uh, genuinely saddened by this, bummed out, and uh, and hopefully they'll do the right thing with the movie and not and not and not make a bad decision. Because I I do worry there's potential for like a really unseemly, bad, insensitive decision that the movie makers could make. So hopefully I they think, think it through. I think they'll handle it with the, the kind of class dignity you would expect the Fast and Furious producers to do. And we should all spill a little knot today for Paul Walker. Well said. Adam Carolla, uh, we will talk to you soon in person. Hopefully enjoy the rest of the week. Thanks, buddy. We have Cousin Sal coming up in a little bit, but first, a word from our, our buddies at Stamps.com. As you know, I don't go to the post office. I just print out my stamps. I do it on Stamps.com. You can do it, too. If you're a BS Report listener, you get a little special deal. You can put a BS in the top right where you're signing up, you get about 55 bucks off postage. You get a free scale. Um, you get the knowledge of knowing that you're never going to have to go to the post office again. Stamps.com. Check it out. They're our sponsor. They're our friends. We use the product. We like it. Stamps.com. All right, bringing in now uh, our friend, Cousin Sal. Cousin Sal, a tough weekend for me and Corolla. <laughs> with uh, with Paul Walker, um, we had to we had to hash it out. I, I've never heard Corolla more upset about anything. I didn't even really know Corolla had emotions. Well, you know what I was worried about? Did he by chance call from the car because he does that a lot and he tends to pontificate with his eyes closed? We, we could have had a very <laughs> ironic true. moment on the BS report. This That's moment. true. I didn't even think of that. I, I always try to avoid doing a podcast with him in the car. You're yeah. right. He sometimes he'll get he'll. He'll uh, he'll go into a, a place where his he actually closes his eyes as he talks. So hopefully he didn't do that. Uh, NFL Week 14. I I've never been colder in my life. I'm actually kind of enjoying how bad I'm doing. Wait a minute, I, Week I 14. Say, you're already predicting you're going to do bad poorly this week. What? Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean I, I'm on a run. I'm, I went four and eleven in Week 13 with oh, uh, right. this Adam New Orleans tonight, and I'm just going to assume I'm going to go three and thirteen. Everything that can go wrong went wrong, and and you guys. Uh, you and the house in the super contest had a chance to be first, and you finally had your your bad luck week. You went one. Yeah, we were tied nine. for second going into Thursday, which had the season ended that day, which it never does. But we would have uh, would have spoiled like one hundred and fourteen thousand dollars, and then we went proceeded to go one three and one. Philly pushing Baltimore's Thursday non cover in Chicago yesterday just murdered us. Just awful, awful, yeah. awful. But what are weird. You Really weird times right now in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know what to attribute it to. I don't know if there were just too many injuries this year. I don't know if the rule changes got too wonky. I don't. I just don't know what to make of the season anymore. You think like yesterday, um, a, a good example of a of a WTF game is San Diego at Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. You know, I took San Diego. I didn't think. If you're going to take Cincinnati, the case would be, well, San Diego's defense stinks. Right. So since if Cincinnati's going to go in there, they'll get their offense going. Now, it turns out to be a defensive struggle. Yeah. And 
Cincinnati scores 17 points in the game, and they win in San Diego. I mean, I mean, I don't even understand what's happening anymore. I don't even know how to explain it. You know, I picked them to go to the Super Bowl, and I'll, I'll stick with it, Cincinnati. But I hate them. I hate watching them. They win ugly. They lose ugly. Right. I don't want to see them in the playoffs. But, you know, I, I, I was in uh, Vegas yesterday visiting some degenerate oh, yeah. uh, friends. So mm. I got to see the, the games of the, the Palm Sportsbook. I got to see them all at once. Usually I can get like four screens up or something. But I got to see all eight up. And I'm looking, I'm like, God, these are some lousy quarterbacks. They really are. Like <laughs> Fitzpatrick, Whedon, Henny. You know, I like Mike Lennon, but what's he doing there? And then you know, McCown and... And Ponder uh, filled in for by uh, Castle. It's like, it, it never ends. It just goes Keenum. on and on. Yeah, there was the early games yesterday. Did I mention Geno Smith? Yeah. Yeah, Gino. No, well, let's, let's mention him a second time to be safe. Then Matt Sims came in. Yeah. Yeah, there was a stretch in the early games yesterday where it seemed like every quarterback was terrible except for Tom Brady. Right. And uh, and I guess luck. Although luck has... Since Reggie Wayne went away, it's just not been the same. I don't know what to make of that. But um, the one the one crazy thing yesterday were the receiver numbers. Right. Alshon Jeffrey, Josh Gordon, uh, Eric, Eric Decker. Decker. And, uh, insane. So, you know, Damashek, you, we kicked you out of our league. Right. Damashek, 11 days ago, is trying to get a running back for me. And somehow we ended up on Le'Veon Bell for Josh Gordon which uh, we talked about a little bit last week in the podcast. Josh Gordon became the first receiver ever to have back-to-back 200-yard receiving games. He's phenomenal. And I, I, I'll laugh at Damashek. If, if not for I did the same thing. I traded Josh Gordon for Wes Welker, and I thought I was like, oh, my God, what a steal this is. I, You're so I wouldn't be surprised high. if my other league vetoes this trade. But, yeah. Yeah, really bad. Well, Barnwell pointed this out in his comp today. Josh Gordon missed the first two games of the year, and he and if he hadn't, with the stats that he has, he'd be on pace for close to 2,000 yards. Yeah, that's true. And this is with Brian Hoyer, yeah, Brandon Whedon, who's the other terrible Jason quarterback Campbell. there? Jason Campbell. Is that a fourth who, one? Who knows I guess there's who a fourth stringer week. this week. Yeah, Alex Tanny. That was a big loss for our boys yesterday, though. Yeah. We need – they're four and eight – there's going to be some teams that catch him. I don't think they win again with Brandon Whedon. And, uh, and, he and they have a chance for a top three. Though. I mean, having Josh Gordon helps, but he was, it was the defense. It was this Hall of Fame defense that Lombardi and, and our friend Alec talk about that, you know, Ray Horton led. It, 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 it fell apart against the Jaguars at home. That's, that's not good. Yeah, that's – I mean, Jags? if you're going to tank, you got to disguise it a little bit, right? It helped when Whedon kicked the ball out of the end zone. Right, yeah. I enjoyed that. Uh, the Jags, I gotta say, not 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 bad. <laughs> Gus Bradley, who knew? I think they were zero and seven, and we bet. And I called you. I said we have to bet under two and a half wins. There's not even a lot of big on this. They, they can't. They can't get to one. They weren't going to get to two and a half, and they yeah. won three out of the last four. Yeah, they're rallying for Gus Bradley. Their big mistake. Henny's like a little too confident. Too confident? Oh yeah. Yeah, if you're going for the number one pick. You you need like you know Matt Sims, right? You need you need Geno Smith. You need like that kind of caliber of QB. Matt right. Flynn, Henny can actually like complete twenty yard passes and stuff and keep you in games, which is not what you want if you're going for the number one pick. Well, they have a they have a barn burner this Thursday night, Houston at Jacksonville. That's that's one for the ages. So that's the one. That's really probably going to decide the number one pick because if if Houston wins that. Now, all of a sudden, we have all these teams log jammed at, at three wins. Mm-hmm. Atlanta won yesterday, which was a terrible win by them. I know they have <laughs> veterans on the team. It's their goal to win, but, man. They want to that's be accepted when... in some country. Not, uh, not ours, but, yeah. They went to and, then, uh, and then you have stupid Minnesota wins, the last thing their fans wanted. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Uh, a tie and a win. What are they doing in the last uh, seven days? And then, incredibly, Washington now three and nine would have the number two pick, which they would have to hand over to the Rams Saint for Louis, yeah. um, for the Griffin trade from two years ago. Mm-hmm. And now we'll find out how much they like Sam Bradford. Right, and Tampa's also three and nine. Although I, I don't even look at them as a three and nine team. Uh, for some reason, I still think they like six and six. But uh, right, they they'll, they'll win one more. Yeah. The the cool thing about St. Louis, if they got that number two pick. If they decided they were just going to keep Bradford, they could then make the same RG3 trade all over again. Right, it's true. 
They get three more for they, they That might be the trade. They get six first round picks out of that trade. Maybe they just get RG three for like a fifth rounder. Oh, that would be. Yeah, it makes me feel bad to watch him. I know. I know. He's just he's totally lost his mojo, and it's so. He, this doesn't happen in like basketball. Well, but unless, why? Unless but you're it, it happens in the second half. And congratulations, you went six minutes without mentioning basketball. It's a, that might be a new record for you. Today. NBA hole. NBA hole. But uh, what is you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't have liked half? yesterday. You wouldn't yeah. have enjoyed yesterday at my house when uh, on one of the four TVs I had Indiana and the Clippers. Is that true? Yeah. yeah well, I mean, I now's as good a time as any that uh, I should congratulate you on your Iron Bowl reaction. You know, a lot of YouTube reactions up there for the Alabama Auburn game, and yours yeah. made it. I did? Yeah, I didn't yeah, even you, remember what, having you, one. You posted on YouTube? You don't know anything about it? No. Well, it wasn't a phone call. I'll just play it. I'll just play it off the site right now. Here we are, just me and my boyfriend, Russell Wussell Hussle, Bustle Man Wussle Wilson, spooning on our brand new electric reclining sofa, watching the end of the Iron Bowl. They put a second back on the clock. Alabama going for a 57-yard field goal for the win. The kick is up. What happened? Russell Wussell Man Muscle just accidentally changed the channel with his... <laughs> Look at this. NBA. Wizards up on the Hawks. 28-20. Time taken away. Eric Maynard, three-pointer. Missed. Jan Vesele rebounds to Washington. Jump shot of time expires. He misses. Wizards lead 28-20 after one. That was the most exciting ending of a first quarter ever. Iron Bowl. Over and out. Marcin Gortat. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's pretty much what happened. 3,500 um, views. <laughs> <laughs> it should have more. I don't know what happened. It'll get more now. <laughs> do you you really think that was a greater ending than Doug Flutie? Yeah, I do. Because it ended wow. Alabama's dynasty. The the whole game, I remember being better. I was young with Flutie, but I I do remember the game being better. I had everything. Block kicks, 99-yard pass, obviously the 108-yard return. Everyone hates Saban. I, I think that there's just so much more to it. I can see it. I, I guess my counter for, the, for Miami Boston College was Thanksgiving. Yeah, more eyes um, on it. It it was kind of ushered in <laughs> a more wide open era. I there mm. just weren't a lot of games like that back then where it was just two quarterbacks going back and forth having a duel. Right. And then the the hail mary itself. I mean, it it, it kind of created the legend of Flutie. I don't know. I'd have to think about it some more. I I think the difference this time around, other than the end of the Alabama dynasty, was just having social media. Right. Yeah. It's it true. was probably the number one. Would you say the number one greatest sports social media moment since we've had Twitter? Yeah, I think so. Has there been a greater sports moment since Twitter existed? I, I guess maybe the blackout in the Super Bowl is the only other one. Oh, yeah, one. yeah, that definitely got more. Yeah. Uh, Baseball didn't have one. Hockey didn't have one. I mean, you nope. could say World Cup. Yeah, that's probably World Cup that we don't even know about. Yeah. Some sort of World Cup. Back in something. the 40s, people tweeting. <laughs> anyway, that was something. Yeah. Uh, what's your What's your BCS prediction? Uh, I think Florida State kills Ohio State. Okay. I think uh, they went by three touchdowns. Yeah. Ohio State, I, I, don't, I don't think they play, uh, they don't play ranked teams. It's going to, you know, take its toll after a while. But we'll see. I, I just want people think? to know I'm not, I'm not changing for my these last four weeks, I really want to see how bad these picks can get. I think it's possible just to have a bad year. A lot of people are having them. I'm totally fine with it. I'm happy that people are going against my picks for their own financial gain. I'm not going to change anything I'm doing. Good. And uh, and I'm really excited to see where this goes. 16 games, week 14, Thursday night. If if Auburn Alabama was the Iron Bowl, then what would you call Texans Jags? Uh, this is the. Um, uh, Rabbit feces uh, in a deep fryer bowl. I don't know what this is. This is really bad. I'm up yeah. seven five and one going into week fourteen. Yeah. I'm going to give you one because I didn't give this any thought. I was like, screw these two teams. It cost me a ton of money this year. I'm making this a pick 'em. What did you say? This is at Jacksonville. Correct? At Jacksonville. I have the Texans by two and a half. All right, good. See, you got it. You're up one nothing. Texans by three. This is spread. Okay. Stupid. Texans, I don't know if they're not that bad or if the Patriots might secretly stink and just be super scrappy. And, and this Pats team is 9-3. and three. All three games they could have won in the last five minutes. Even the Bengals game, then we had the ball driving in a monsoon down 
Yeah. Then the Jets game, they called that garbage shove from 15 yards away from the kick. Right. And then the Carolina game, they don't call it defensive pass holding, which is the only time in the history of the NFL that call hasn't been made in that situation. True. Um, and those were the three losses. But but, I'm with you. They're good. They, they're probably going to get a second seed, though. But it's not to say they can't go into Denver and win. Well, that's the problem with those two calls, you know. And it, I feel like if this was another team, nobody wants to hear the Patriot fans or Boston fans whine right. about anything. But th- those two calls, if one of them go the Pats way, potentially that's the difference between playing in New England and playing in Denver. Now, I think the Pats can go into Denver and win. I don't think it, it's really going to matter ultimately, but, um, you know, it's just, it's crazy that Denver's going to sneak into that. Wouldn't that be more now. gratifying if you go into Denver and win? I know the odds are against it, you know, whereas if you host it, it would be better, but. Yeah, I don't. I, that I, finally I, shuts all the Manning, uh, supporters up. Manning my thing with bridge. these, with these new stadiums, I don't think home field matters in January as much. I think anybody can go in anywhere. It's 15 degrees. Everybody's wearing mittens and coats, and nobody's making noise. You know, yeah, it's right. like look at the, the Browns lost to the Jaguars. There you go. You yeah, beat the Browns at home. <laughs> Great example. But I think like uh, you know, I, like the Pats when we when we had the old Sullivan Stadium, Schaefer Stadium, Foxborough Stadium. It had three names, but. I felt like that was an advantage. Like you had these cold metal benches and it was like an armpit and teams went in there and it was freezing and the field was bad and it kind of helped us. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if Gillette stadium in January helps the Pats. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe Seattle, maybe they, they should pay whoever our, the architect was for that stadium. Uh, top dollar. Never went right. Seattle has a home field. I, yeah. I would say Arrowhead's kind of overrated, right? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. If your number one pass rusher is out. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's I'm true. with you. Minnesota, Baltimore kicks off Sunday. Mm. Baltimore lingering. Mm-hmm. And maybe now that Jacoby Jones is back, a, a, a mildly interesting option for the sixth seed. Yeah. Uh, I have the Bengals by. F- oh, I'm sorry. Uh, can't pick the Bengals there. I can't pick the Bengals. Can you. I? I have the Ravens by seven points at home against oh, the Bengals. We both got it, and it is seven. It's exactly okay. seven. That's a tease. Teaser game. Let's keep that in mind. Indy at Cincinnati. Peterson quietly on pace for 1,600 yards and 13 touchdowns. He's insane. He is and insane. V- very disappointing year for Peterson. 1,600 <laughs> yards, 13 touchdowns. What was the next one? Uh, Indianapolis at Cincinnati. Mm. I had the Bengals by four. I had four also. It's six. That's a little high. People Too don't high, like this Colts right? team. Well, now, this is a th- third, four seed implications, right, this game? Yeah. Would you rather have the fourth seed and host KC or the third seed and host Baltimore? I don't know if that's I don't know if that's a gimme right away anymore. Well, the fourth seed, then you're playing Denver in round two. No. Unless oh, and then round two, yeah. That's true. That much is true. Versus uh, New England in round two. Yeah, I don't know. For the record, Indianapolis hasn't played a good start to finish game since week four against Jacksonville. I agree. Even and the I, Seattle and Denver wins were, you know, they put together two and a half good quarters. And Yeah, you just kind of have to blow them out in the first. Don't let them back in the games like the Rams did. I don't know what their formula was. They looked awful yesterday, but whatever they did to the Colts, that's what you need to do. I don't think the Colts look right. That's a team I'd want to play in the playoffs. Yeah, that's not bad. All right, Cleveland and New England. Mm. I hit double the digits. exactly. Double digits, obviously. Yep. Uh. I was either going to go 11 or 13. Don't ask why. And I went. Uh, Let me just say, uh, one of them is right. So <laughs> Okay, I went 13. Wow, good job. Yeah, thanks. Good job. That's what Thank I had, you. and that's exactly what it is as of uh, Monday morning. For some reason, it's never 12. Never 12. No, they stay away. Yeah. I will say this is a nice matchup for the Pats because the one thing you could do in the Pats whenever you want is run the ball. Mm-hmm. And the Browns cannot really run the ball. I don't know what I did. I loaded up on Cleveland. I saw the line was seven. I said, they have no right giving anyone seven. Someone knows something that we don't. I'm taking them. I'm taking them at least on the money line. And uh, uh, and then all of a sudden, I'm betting Brandon Whedon and the Browns. Oh, what am I doing? They, he should never give points. It awful. should be a rule. Oakland at the Jets. Two teams uh, who should never give points. God, the, the Jets QB situation... 
It's all time bleak, right? Has there ever been a worse collection? Gino. At least Gino was like running around and doing stuff earlier. Now I don't I don't know what How do you get much worse without an injury? I don't know. It's like the league figured out something. Yeah. Or he's sick. Uh oh, he's way off on these passes. Yeah, I, I can't believe I'm doing this, but I'm laying a field goal. Jets by three over the Raiders. You're closer than I am. I said Jets by one and it's two and a half. Mm. And I think we have both these teams, or at least I do. I have both them under. But we definitely have Oakland to have the worst record, which is not going to happen. We it's possible. That you can't rule it out. Yeah. How, and it, yeah. during Thanksgiving, at what point did you start to get mad about Matt McGloin throwing seeds around the field? Uh, I was mad at when we fumbled the kick. And uh, I don't these these Thanksgiving games, it takes teams to get going, I think. You know, the Lions took, took them a while, and the Cowboys. And uh, I, I wasn't too worried. I really wasn't. This okay. this week I'm worried with the Bears, but we'll get to that. Were you worried that Romo was on the cover of SI? Yeah, that's bad too. But I mean, maybe it's a. Re- this is the guy who's there's never been a more cursed athlete, and uh, and maybe this reverses it. I don't know. I'm trying to work that in my head. Heard a crazy stat today. Yeah. Do you know Romo is 11 and 15 in December? Yeah, I knew it was. A, well, no, you thought it was worse. No, it's just they people. Every time December rolls around, that oh, stack gets yeah, thrown yeah. around like I was, yeah, being, I know. So, I was I know. being snarky. They showed the November stats, and it was like twenty three and five. I was like, oh yeah, that lasts for three more days, and then it becomes a huge negative. Mm. So, um, Detroit at Philly, solid game. Another Fo- one with third or four seed implications if Philly were to win the division. Is Foles just good? Yeah, he might just be good. He, he I, doesn't I know, screw like, up. I mean, I guess he's got Alex in the tendencies. He, he runs – when he runs for a first down, he's completely straight up and makes it. I don't get the allure. This can't be what Chip Kelly had in mind for this offense, but it is – it's working. I like how com- how calm he is after big plays. Yeah. He throws touchdowns, and it's and it's like uh, like he's going to get the mail from the mailbox. Like right. He doesn't even react, which I, I, I think is a good sign if you're an Eagles fan. Pretty two, good. Se- two seven and five teams now in the NFC East. Yeah. Oh, I, listen, I know. It's, uh, Congratulations. It's coming down to that last game, December 29th. Yeah, you, you're probably going to finish eight and eight. Put it in the books. Yeah. Uh, I have the Eagles giving two and a half points to the Detroit Lions. All right, you get this. It's a full three. I said four. I went a little high with this, mm-hmm. but very interested to see how this turns out. I made the mistake of going against Detroit at home. On Thanksgiving, I, I think they're one of those teams that's one type of home team and then another type of road team. They're just two teams. You just but have you to bet accordingly. Don't kill yourself, Mike. They, they hadn't won and covered in eleven years at home on Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's yeah, true. that was a rough one. Um, yeah. Miami at Pittsburgh. Mm. Miami just is zigging and zagging. There's no way to keep up. I have uh, yep. the Steelers giving. Four to Miami. I had four also. It's three and a half. So it's oh. right there. And uh, That's a nice game. It's a nice game. I don't know. Is, is Mike Tomlin, does he go? I think he should go to prison for what he did. He co- cost me and Joe House money um, for uh, stepping on this on the uh, field. Yeah, it, should do, the, it should be a Shawshank deal. This has been a week of coaches interfering with, with play, and it really seems like it's 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 solvable to stop it. Yeah. Not really that hard. If the coach steps on the field, it should be a 15-yard penalty. Exactly, yeah. But, I mean, when the guy's running for a touchdown, maybe you just give it to him. I, I was know. See, I thought the most fascinating pl- subplot of the whole Tama thing was the fact that instead of watching the field, he watches the Jumbotron. He's uh, watching the Jumbotron, yeah. It's like, it was like we brought one of our sons to the game. Right. I get, so I mean, look at the field. The action's happening in the field. It's probably only like three years away where the coaches are just going to be watching on their cell phones, um, or, which is uh, – Implanted in their wrist. So Gary Kubiak starting that now already. Yeah. <laughs> Steelers. Uh, I have. St- oh, we got that. You got that. Buffalo at Tampa Bay. Four and eight what? against three and nine. I f- I feel bad that the Bulls have to play that terrible Toronto game every year. It's not fair. Yeah, it's but really they get not. something out of it, right? They get money. That's it. They yeah. just get money. But they had thirty eight thousand fans there yesterday, mm-hmm. and half of them rooting for the Falcons. Yeah, it's, not, it's tough. Not great. You don't want to have seven home games and eight 
road games and then a neutral field game during yeah. the year. I've, the London thing wasn't great either, but well, they'll get uh, used to it when they went all eight or in Toronto in a few years, and then it'll be like, whoa. We they have good fans, though. Remember, I mean, remember how the. Uh, the only exception was when all those Steelers fans showed up in Buffalo for that game earlier in the year. Mm-hmm. That was a joke. That's right. That was weird. <laughs> that uh, was very strange. I have Bucks <laughs> by three over the Bills, and I kind of like the Bucks. Uh, you're running away with it this week. I had three and a half. It is three, mm. and I, I like, like the, the Bucks. Bucks as well. Yeah, you are. I'm, up. Sure, I'm sure the Bills will will lose by two, and I'll, and I'll lose my. Pick. Yeah. You've won or tied every game so far. This could this could be a skunking. Uh, Kansas City at Washington. I'm going to hit this one, too. Kansas City by four and a half over the Redskins. Oh, this man. Is in the Vegas zone. That is exactly right. I said three yeah. and a half. It's four and a half. Vegas zone. Oh, this isn't fun this week. I don't like the Chiefs at all. I don't think this is a Vegas. I think Vegas hates the Chiefs. They don't respect yeah. them at all. They're like They must have. They never give them any credit here. I mean, it the happened. Redskins are terrible. I'm going to say like three or four weeks ago, they had some home game, and it seemed like they should have been favored by like seven and a half or eight, and it was four. The Remember? Chiefs? Yeah, it was. Uh, I'm I'll find it. it. Hold on. No, it was. Uh, yeah, that's the one we were first alerted to. It. Oh, it was, was it? Maybe it was at Buffalo. They were only given three. It seems suspicious. Is I can't remember. Yeah. One of them. One of them, it was clear that Vegas did not believe it all. Yeah, yeah, anyway. at Buffalo, you're right. They were given three and a half, and then let's see where they. Where and Buffalo they wasn't playing well either. Right. right. Anyway, yeah, that was. I it. don't think I'm not sure they've been favored by double digits this whole year. Um, I can look back. Nah, yeah. that's all right. You don't have to. It's just they, it's, you know, they, it's a three game losing streak that I think Vegas felt like was coming for a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at home against Houston, they were seven. You're probably right. Probably right. What's, Atlanta what, Green Bay will skip because we don't know about uh, Aaron Rodgers. Um, what would you guess tentatively if he was coming back? If he was playing? I think if he's playing, seven. I would have Green Bay by eight and a half. Yeah, I went a little. I would have gone a little lower. And if I, he's not playing, I would go Packers by three. I had three also for that. Yeah. If we were going to do that. Yeah, I think they're about to announce that Aaron Rodgers will come back only for the Cowboys game, and then they'll sit him the rest of the year, and he won't play this week either. <laughs> He just, his only goal for the season is just to ruin the Cowboys. He doesn't care about the Packers. That's right. All right, Sunday afternoon. So out of those early games, which is yeah. good. That's, uh, Detroit at Philly is really good. Indy at Cincy is really good. Yeah, I, It's really good, but I wouldn't want to watch it. No, I know. I like those. that other one, though. I think Eagles-Lions is a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Tennessee at Denver. Oh. Same conundrum, 11 or 13. I'm You're exactly say, right. I'm going to say 13 again, wow. Mike. Wow. All right. You're cheating. You're officially cheating. I'm not cheating. cheating. Oh, Why come am on. I cheating? Come on. This is crazy. I don't need to cheat. I'm having the worst handicapping year of all time. Why would I ever want happiness? Trying to save face here. I went way low. I said nine and a half, but yeah, it is yeah. 13. Can I do talking head guy for a second? Sure. Okay. Uh, oh, how do I want to do this? Um, do what you need to do. All right, Bill. The Patriots did the bad thing. They awoke the sleeping giant and Peyton Manning. He was coasting until that eye opener in Foxborough, and now, now the rest of the league had better look out. <laughs> Guys, you cannot wake up Peyton Manning. <laughs> he is a sleeping off. giant. <laughs> You're better off laying down, losing every single game, and, and hoping that he doesn't notice. It, better than waking him up. To you should put nine defenders. Oil. Put nine defenders on the field as an homage to Peyton Manning. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Mm. But that said, we have a lot of time to fill, and we do say we sound exactly like these guys. It, it does seem like that's what happened, right? <laughs> He's like, "Screw you." I'm. Uh, <laughs> any other team would have uh, that would have killed their season, but I'm going to capitalize on it. I think that's what happened, and the other thing that happened was the Chiefs. Did not have a defensive back who could cover Eric Decker. Yeah, that's true. That's I don't know too. what happened to the Chiefs. Uh, yeah, I don't know. They dropped a lot of passes, too. Oh, that Donnie Avery killed them in that game. Holy Coming from background. someone who had the Chiefs plus seven in the second half, they dropped a lot of passes. I mean, I was watching a lot of of the Knicks game, so I, I saw right. I was, just saw a tiny <laughs> bit of it, but it did seem like Donnie Avery every time I looked at it. That's true, the Knicks Pelicans. Yeah. Uh, St. Louis and Arizona. Oh. I think Arizona's pretty good. I actually thought that was a respectable loss yesterday against the Eagles. They could have folded. They didn't. 
They didn't get a lot of calls either. The, the wild card could have like 12, 11 or 12 wins. I guess 11 mm. wins, which is, you know, they didn't go 10 and 6 in Arizona and not make it. I have the cards by four and a half. Wait a minute. Yes, I got one. I said <sighs> seven and it's six. That's a little too high. Uh, well, how do you even handicap the Rams anymore? Yeah. Yeah, they win can. big on the road. They get trounced on the road. Mm. It's a tough one. All right, Giants at Chargers. Oh, boy. Speaking of how do you handicap, uh, I have the Chargers by five. Vegas zone all the way. Oh, I'm coming back a little bit here. I said four. It's three and a half. Oh, that's not. That's a mistake. I don't agree with that. Yeah, I guess the loser is officially out, even though they're really both out, right? Five and Do you seven. know that the Texans, if the season ended today, would have the number one pick, but they're also still alive for the sixth seed? No, they're not. They yeah, are. They are. Yeah, you could have a six and ten six seed right now. Really? Oh, yeah, I guess so, because Baltimore yeah. six and six. Well, none of those six and six teams play each other. Uh, actually, just no. Baltimore and Miami, right? No. Wow. Can you hear me? That's weird. They should go for the. They shouldn't try to make the playoffs. They should go for the pick. If the if you're the Texans listening right now. Well, I think I'd love to know teams' records when Wade Phillips is an interim coach, even for a week. What yeah. happens to them for that season? That kid, feel, that's a handicap, a stink. right there. Yeah, it's a stink in the team. Seattle at San Francisco. Oh, that's a good one. That's not a flex game, huh? No, because you got Carolina at New Orleans. Oh, oh, well, those are two beauties. Yeah. I have uh, this uh, straightforward Niners by three. Yeah, that's what I had, and that's what it is. Yeah, I wish it meant more, be. this game. It, do, it doesn't, though. It really doesn't mean a lot. Well, it means a lot to the Niners. I guess to the Niners, yeah, but they're three games behind. I'm assuming Seattle wins. They'll be three games behind. The most interesting one is uh, usually teams have something to play for in this stretch, but you could argue the Chiefs now have nothing to play for. So it's going to be six seed. Yeah, you're right. They are nine and three. The next, the next wild card possibilities are all, all of six wins. Right, they're going to need one more win in December to clinch the five seed. Wow, Simmons, you brought something insightful to the day. I'm I did. Very I proud did. of you. I did. I was thinking about it. I was thinking about the NBA Eastern Conference playoff race. And That's true. Yeah, it does to coincide. Me Kansas City. <laughs> well, maybe we take that. Maybe we bet against the Chiefs all year. Maybe we should have started three weeks ago. The problem is they've lost three straight. Yeah. So you don't you don't exactly want to turn the uh, on off switch yeah, off. Yeah, you don't want to wake the sleeping giant, as we learned from uh, from talking head guy. Uh, Carolina at New Orleans Sunday night. Carolina at New Orleans Sunday night. A great one. Carolina just keeps roping me in. New Orleans minus one eighty to win the division right now. Carolina plus one fifty. Before well, that was one of our great bets was we did the NFC South to make the Super Bowl. It was, what, plus 260 before the good. season? That was our best future bet. That's going to save us. We have two of the best three. I had the Saints by six. I had six also. Only four and a half. A lot of respect for Carolina. Whatever they lack in respect for KC, they give it to the Panthers. According to the advanced metrics, um, hands down a top three team now. Who is? Carolina. Yeah. It's Denver, uh, Seattle, and Carolina. I'm done. I have to see a hypnotist to extract all these biases I have before the playoffs because uh, I have to deem them good. They're good, Carolina, right? Carolina's good. I, yeah. You know what? I was thinking about it. The 2001 Pats, who came on in the second half and got a lot of momentum, and people didn't even really be totally believe, even as they went into the playoffs, what the Panthers are doing now reminds me of that Pats team because they had a couple decisive big wins against big teams, but then they also had the lucky win, right, last week? Right. The game they shouldn't have won, but they eked out against Miami, and you need a couple of those. They have the momentum. I really don't think it's that big of a difference between being 13-3 and three and being 5-11 and 11 in this league. Yeah, you might be right. Guys, in the National Football <laughs> League, parity rules all. That is a good word, parity. We, but, we should you know, we should have a, a parody count for uh for this last stretch of month stretch of of ESPN. If you hear a guy talk about parody, tweet tweet us. Let's <laughs> know well, what content. Well, he's using their heads, his yeah. hands. Yeah. Uh, Monday night, Dallas at Chicago. 
I don't like this one bit. Scary receivers in the Bears. Huh? You, you, your worst nightmare for a receiving matchup going against you. I don't like it. I know. It's, uh, it doesn't really even matter. It's quarterback. Town Cutler, Peter Tom Willis, it's going to be bad. What was Brandon Carr like? Didn't wasn't that the Raiders game? He was getting torched the whole game, and then he finally made a play and he reacted like uh, yeah, he went crazy. Like the last two and a half quarters had it happened. He was getting beat by a former Cowboys practice squatter, which was even better. The yeah. Raiders like it's like a game show. You don't even know who these receivers are. They all have these weird numbers. You think yeah. it's like is that Lewis Murphy? No, he hasn't been on the team for two years. Yeah, it's a, a continuous practical joke by Al Davis, even though he's not alive. Uh, I have Bears by three over the Cowboys. Oh, all right. Well, that's interesting. I mean, that's probably what it should be. And I said Cowboys by one. It's Cowboys by two and a half. In Chicago? I don't like that. Yep, it's in Chicago. Why is that? I don't get it at all. Six and seven and five versus six and six. Chicago's coming off a loss. I, I mean, oh, they could put up fifty against us. Chicago's four and two at home. Killed, killed the Cowboys on Monday night last year. Killed them. Dallas is two and four on the road. Yeah, yeah. We don't beat good teams, so that'll be it. You won the week. You're seven. We're, I'm seven, six, and one now after fourteen weeks. That's really strange. That's the one of the weirdest lines that since all season, I would even say. Yeah. Well, maybe it's coaching because that Trustman didn't. I mean, I know they beat it to death, but. And I had it in the Hilton contest, so it, it killed us. But kicking on second down, like that is a 40 – what is with 47? Like coaches get to 47-yard field goal, and they're like, yeah. And that's exact yardage that Norwood missed from, right? Wasn't it 47? Yeah. And they got on second – like get them closer. I don't care if it's in a dome. It's, it's adverse conditions. You're on the road in overtime. Just get them closer, 47 yards, second down. I had an incredible matchup with uh, Ham's Proxy uh, oh, yeah. for a playoff spot this week, and one of the reasons I won was because Justin Tucker kicked five field goals and might be a robot. Wow. He five field goals. Justin Tucker outscored Tony Romo, which was one of the reasons I won this week. So you had Tucker and uh, and Gordon? Yeah. How many points did you? You must have scored 1,000 points. I'm telling you, this is one of the great matchups in the history of fantasy football. Right now, it's I have 132.2 points, and he has 129.05. Is it still going, or it's over? I It's over. The only one left is I have the Seahawks defense, so yeah. I have a chance to get to 140. But I thought it was over, and he had Eric Decker. Yeah. And all of a sudden, Eric Decker put up the 41.4 and just kept catching touchdowns, and he actually passed me. Yeah. And then I had Alfred Morris on the Seahawks defense. But, um, I mean, that you can't ask for much more than a matchup from that, guys. No. You know what? I, actually, though, I just realized I don't give a shit about this league. Oh, you don't? don't? Sorry. No, I just, it just hit me. It just hit me now. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> you shouldn't have gotten kicked out of the league. You shouldn't have come up with that stupid rule. I, it's a great rule. It's a great rule. It's not a great rule. You've death. been miserable all year. It's a terrible rule. The league's falling apart. It's not fun. Nobody sends emails. It's a terrific. What was fun about this? It's a terrific rule, and I hope I get kicked out again. Let's just keep it going. All right, what do you have Jimmy to Jimmy Kimmel Live, Orlando Bloom, and Ronda Rousey tonight, and Wild Feathers, I think is the name of the band, uh, and Benedict Cumberbatch, R. Kelly, Jason Schwartzman later in the week. Grantland, I lost another stunner with the Titans in the first half. I don't know if you saw how that, that one lost, but that was a, 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 a personal foul away from the ball, sets up a field goal for the Colts, but I went 2-1 with my props back up Friday, and uh, I like largest lead over 14.5 tonight in the uh, Seattle game. I didn't see what happened to the Titans game. I was watching the Raptors. Oh, was it the Raptors? <laughs> the Raptors were on yesterday. There was and, another uh, game in Toronto. There's, there's football in Toronto now. Oh, forget it. Yeah. Also, Grandland Christmas party this Saturday night. <laughs> Bill's house at 327 <laughs> Boulevard in Reseda. So that'll be fun. <laughs> because good job by you. Good job by you. I got nine uh, to two odds. Molly Lambert gets uh, tossed or drunkenly wanders into the pool. All right, I, those odds are dropping. Excellent. Talk to you soon. I'll talk to you. Bye. Target the sun off. Whoa. Thank you for downloading the BS Report with Bill Simmons. Too much fun. Check out more podcasts at the iTunes Music Store or at PodCenter at ESPNRadio.com. Peace out. 
Got to say, Gola, great call on grabbing Subway for lunch and getting guacamole on our subs. Told you this new guac really amps up the flavor. Yep, something adding up things can be great. Guacamole on your sub, a new co-host to replace you. What was that? Oh, no, nothing. Subway now has deliciously rich new guacamole made from ripe Haas avocados with just a hint of garlic, onion, and jalapeno. Discover how new guacamole turns up the flavor on any of your freshly made favorites. Subway, eat fresh.